Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Odin Pro. We've definitely been waiting a little while for this Android powered handheld to release and it's finally shipping to people who've backed it on Indiegogo. So uh, definitely check your email if you did back one. I believe they're shipping out the black ones first and then they'll get onto the multicolored variants that they also offered on their Indiegogo campaign. So yeah, I'm super excited about this handheld. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know we do a lot of emulation over here, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to pick the Odin up. And this just happens to be the Odin Pro, so we do get that Snapdragon 845 and 8GB of RAM. And when it comes to the SoC they're using in here, it's not revolutionary, it's been out for a while, but I think the way they have it packaged up is perfect for one of these handhelds. Inside of the box, we're going to get a user manual and a USB Type-C charging cable. So we can charge and sync this to our PC if we want to transfer some stuff to the internal storage. So I've had a chance to mess around with this for the past couple days and I've become a huge fan of this handheld. This is going to be really my first look video. We're going to run some benchmarks. We're going to do some testing with native Android games, some emulation, some cloud gaming. But so far, this has been one of the best Android based handhelds that I've ever messed around with. I really do like the layout here. It's been super comfortable to play on for long periods of time. As you can see, we do have some LED accents, and these can be disabled if you don't like them around the analog stick and the side LEDs, but I think it does add a lot to this little handheld. It also supports HDMI out with this micro HDMI port and a micro SD card. I'm actually using a 400 gigabyte card here, and personally, I think that's plenty for what we have here. So when it comes to the button layout, over here on the right hand side, we have our start, select, A, B, X, Y. We also have a home button for Android and our analog stick. And these analog sticks do support L3 and R3. Over on the left hand side, we have our D-pad and our other analog stick. And like I mentioned, we can disable these LEDs if we want to, but personally, I think they look really, really good. Up top here, we have our shoulder buttons and our analog triggers. And these triggers are analog, so we get that full control out of them. We've got a volume rocker and our power button. And moving around to the bottom side, we have our dual stereo speakers, USB Type-C, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. And if we take a look at the back of the unit, this does have a built-in cooling fan. You can turn this on or off. There's a couple different modes that we can choose. Plus, we have two extra buttons back here that can be mapped in software. So when it comes to the specs of the Odin Pro, it's looking really good for an Android-powered handheld like this. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 845, 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM. The GPU is the Arduino 640, 128GB of internal storage, plus it has micro SD card support. A 6,600 milliamp hour battery, a 5.98 inch IPS display at 1080p. We've also got Wi-Fi 5 built in along with Bluetooth 5.0. And this is running Android 10 out of the box and I'm not sure if there's plans to upgrade to Android 11 or 12 down the road. So when it comes to these ARM-based handheld emulation slash gaming consoles, we actually got some really good power here. One of the most powerful ones on the market right now, at least for an Android handheld. But with these handhelds, hardware isn't everything, and they've done some really awesome stuff with their custom version of Android 10 for the Odin Pro, and I want to take a look at that first before we get into testing. Alright, so as you can see, I'm kind of just on the regular old Android interface here. Uh, it does work great with this touch screen. We have full access to Google Play. Got a home button will bring us right back to the home anytime we press this, whether we're playing a game or inside of an app. Up here, we do have a few Odin-specific settings, and they really do come in handy for gaming and emulation on this device. First one being our fan. We've got Sport and Smart. We can also turn this completely off. Usually, I've got mine on Sport, and you can actually hear the fan when it's on Sport, but in Smart mode, it kind of custom adjusts to the CPU temperature. We can also turn these ambient LEDs off, be it on the analog sticks or the sidebars. Personally, I like keeping them on. And we also have a couple performance modes that we can choose from. High performance will definitely keep the CPU and GPU clocks up there, but it will get a bit warmer. But really, you don't have to worry about it with this fan built in. I haven't hit thermal throttle through anything that I've done so far. So another thing I love that they've added here is the Odin Launcher. And you can actually set this up right out of the box to just go directly into the Odin Launcher. Very easy to use. We can navigate either with the touchscreen or the built-in controls, be it the D-pad or the analog stick on the left-hand side. If we swipe over from the right, we've got a few settings like our brightness, storage, TV settings for that micro HDMI out. We can turn it to sleep. We've also got our CPU temps. And over here on the left hand side, we can set this up to go to performance mode or high performance mode at any time. 
I usually just have this on. Now it's really easy to use this. You can add your own apps uh, very, very easily. I do like the animations and you can set it up to have more on screen, but uh, I just leave it on number one here. This is how it looked when I started it up. Works out great. We've also got all of the Odin settings that we need from here. And yeah, I think they've done a great job with this launcher. You can also change the wallpaper. I just got it set to black. I think it looks pretty good. And when it comes down to it, the only launcher you'll really need for the Odin or the Odin Pro is the Odin launcher itself. You can do everything from here. And the custom software that they have built in doesn't stop here. I'm going to go ahead and move over to an Android game that doesn't natively support controllers yet. And that's going to be Genshin Impact. With the Odin, we do have a controller mapper built in, and it makes it really easy to set the controls up on this unit for games that don't natively support them. And if you've ever played Genshin Impact, you know how frustrating it can be because they just really haven't added them yet. They should have, but unfortunately it's not there. So from here, if we swipe over to the right, we can actually set up our controls on screen, and it's very easy to do. It works with Genshin Impact, as you can see here. And there's several different modes. So some of these controller mappers, you know, if you try to move the camera, it kind of stutters. With this, they do have a camera movement mode built in. So it makes it really easy to map your physical controls to on-screen touch controls with basically any game. No matter what game you're playing here, you'll be able to map these physical controls to on-screen touch buttons. We've also got a few extra settings over here, like a do not disturb mode. We can clear the RAM. You can record the screen. We've got our on-screen CPU temperature and CPU usage. So yeah, I think this is a nice little feature here, especially for gaming and emulation. So like I mentioned, the Snapdragon 845 isn't a brand new chip, but I still wanted to run some benchmarks on this unit. First up, we have Geekbench 5. This is in high performance mode with the fan set to sport just to get the best out of it. Single core, 519, multi, 2258. Looking decent for a handheld like this, but if you compared it to something like the Snapdragon 888, it's looking on the lower side of things. Next up, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a GPU benchmark that tests the Vulcan performance. 2,120. And finally, we have Antutu. Now, in high performance mode with the fan set to sport, we got a total score of 438,139. I also ran this in regular mode with the fan off. We scored a 434,350. Now, I was actually hoping for a little better bump in high performance mode, but if we take a look at that CPU heat graph, you can see that it stays steady with that fan on. And it did add a bit, but not as much as I was really hoping for. But now, it's time to see how this thing really performs. We're going to test out some native Android games. We'll move over to some cloud gaming and finally emulation. And when it comes to emulation, that's going to be the big draw with the Odin. So first up, we have Dead Cells, and as you can see here, it's running great. I've tested a bunch of different native Android games on this unit, and haven't run into really any issues at all. Something like Minecraft, I was able to get up to 15 chunks before I started seeing it go down to around 55, but yeah, you know, something like Minecraft, this is going to run it all day long just fine. So here's a game I've actually been playing a lot lately on my regular Android phone. This is Rally Rush 2, and unfortunately it doesn't natively support controllers, but with that built-in mapping system, you can play it just fine here. And we are at high settings. It's running at a constant 60. This was recently released for free with Play Pass, and that's one of the big reasons I've been playing it lately. And finally here, for native Android gaming, we have Genshin Impact, and if you play this, you know how hard it can be to run on lower-end systems. Right now, I'm set at low 60 FPS, and we can't quite get it a constant 60. And this is really how it goes with this game, unless you got a really high-end Snapdragon chipset. But I definitely think the 845 is holding its own with this, and if you don't mind playing it at 30 FPS, you can turn this up to high, 30, and have a great time with it. Another thing I've actually been using a lot on this device is cloud gaming. I've tested out GeForce Now, xCloud, or Xbox Game Pass, and here we have Stadia. This is a great little handheld for it. I kind of wish we had Wi-Fi 6, but Wi-Fi 5 has been fine for everything that I've tested so far. As long as you have a decent router in the house, you should be good to go. Now it's time to test out some emulation, and we're going to start off light here with N64. I'm using Mupin 64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store. I'm also upscaled to 960 by 720 running GoldenEye 007, and it's running great. The Snapdragon 845 can definitely handle N64. Taking a look at Sega Saturn, and with this I'm actually using RetroArch with the Yobase and Shiro core, but you could go with the standalone version of Yobase and Shiro if you want to. I just wanted to see if it would handle the core, and with Panzer Dragoon, we're good to go. 
Going into Dreamcast, I was pretty sure we'd have great luck with it, especially if you want to use something like Redream, but Flycast works equally as well. I'm using Redream right now at 1920, and as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it's going to play it just fine. PSP, really good performance here, Vulcan back in, 3x resolution, and even Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta run at full speed. Every once in a while you'll see a dip here and there at 3x, but that's kind of how it goes with this. I also tested some easier to run games at 5x resolution, and they run great either with the Vulcan back in or even OpenGL on the Snapdragon 845. Checking out some 3DS emulation, and to tell you the truth, I wasn't sure how well it would perform. I actually haven't tested the Citra emulator on an 845 chip yet, but it seems to be working pretty decent, especially with the easier to emulate stuff. Now I'm sure there are some harder to emulate 3DS games that might struggle a bit on this, but I was really surprised by the performance so far. So now we're going to move up to the higher end stuff, and here we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. This is the official Dolphin emulator, it's actually the development build from the website with the Vulcan back in. We're at the native resolution, and Auto Mode Elise is one of those games that's a bit hard to emulate. I was actually surprised to see how well it's performing, but I do see some dips every once in a while, and even with some Wii games running with the same exact emulator, it seems to be performing really, really well. Now remember, we're using the official build of Dolphin. There are some builds out there, like Dolphin MMJR, that actually perform better on lower end chips. And in my next video, I will test those out, but I kind of wanted to go with the official version. And I also tested some easier to emulate stuff like Wind Waker and Sunshine. They run great on this little device. These are just some harder to emulate Wii and GameCube games that I wanted to show off. And finally, at least for this video, we have some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. Now there's a lot of stuff that I want to test and I will have a full emulation video coming up. I know I went through a bunch of stuff here, but there's a lot of games that we need to test on this device here. It's the Snapdragon 845. One thing that you can do is see if it runs on the Galaxy S8. And if it does, then it's probably going to work just fine over here. But with PS2 emulation, you will run into some games that won't perform well on this device. So the way I'm running these games right now is in safe mode. Once you boot the emulator up for the first time, it's going to ask you if you want to go to safe mode or unsafe. And in unsafe, it's going to run a lot of hacks in the background, which might net you better performance with some games. But I was actually surprised to see that Gran Turismo 4, with the Vulcan back in at 2x resolution, runs absolutely amazing on this device. So I figured I'd go ahead and test a harder to emulate game, and that's going to be Ratchet & Clank going Commando. And I tried the Vulcan back in, OpenGL, 1x resolution. I also tried some hacks in the background, which just made it run at about 20 FPS. What you're seeing running right now is safe mode, 1x resolution, and the Vulcan back in. And it's just not going to cut it with this game, at least with the latest version of Ether SX2. In the future, we will get a bit better performance, but there's still going to be some games that struggle on the Snapdragon 845. So I really do like the built-in screen here, 1080p, IPS, it looks great, it's got good brightness, awesome viewing angles, but we also have HDMI out of this unit. It uses a micro HDMI cable, and the very first time you plug it in, it's actually going to prompt you, and you'll have to restart the unit one time. So I've just kind of set this up on a stand, and I've got a Bluetooth controller that I can connect to it, but we get a good 1080p picture out of the Odin over that micro HDMI cable. We can use the full Android operating system like it is, or we can use the Odin Launcher, which does work out well on these bigger displays. And all you really need to do is just connect a Bluetooth controller, like an Xbox One controller, and you can play your favorite Android games, you can do some cloud gaming and emulation on a bigger screen. You can connect multiple controllers over Bluetooth, so you can do a multiplayer match if you need to. And yeah, I mean, it definitely looks good. We've got a 1080p picture coming out, and I'm really glad that they added display out of this unit. So like I mentioned, I've had a few days to mess around with the Odin Pro, and my first impressions of the unit, this is one of my favorite handhelds to date. And it just happens to be the most powerful Android handheld with those built-in controllers that we've tested so far. But in the future, we're going to see more powerful units come out with Snapdragon 888, maybe even the Gen 1 Plus. But as it sits right now, this is a really great little handheld for native Android gaming, cloud gaming, and emulation. In this video, we tested out a bunch of stuff, and it basically handled everything except for a PS2 game. I'm really impressed by the performance of the Snapdragon 845 in this unit. It's a very comfortable handheld to mess around with for hours, and it's a bit bigger than the Switch Lite, which I kind of enjoy. It's just got a little more heft to it, 
And overall, I just think it's a great handheld. I do like the layout of the Odin. In my opinion, the buttons feel great, and I really do like this screen. Now, it would have been nice to have something like a Super AMOLED display, but, you know, to keep the cost down, they went with that IPS. I think they chose a great panel here. It's 1080p, and it looks awesome on this handheld. So that's going to wrap it up for my first video. I will have another one coming up. We'll do a full emulation test. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, you know, certain games, uh, I didn't throw any Steam Link in here or Moonlight, but I can do that in the next one if you're interested. Just let me know what it is in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the Odin, I will leave a couple links in the description. But remember, this is the Pro model. They're also going to be releasing a light version with a MediaTek Dimensity chip. Hopefully I can get my hands on one of those soon, but the Pro model will be the most powerful version that they're offering at the time of making this video. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.